Hey, what is up, YouTube? Jacob Levin here, and today we are talk. I am actually going to make a video of. Well, I'm basically doing a reaction video because this video is being made after my reaction on a new video uploaded by Clayton Faridi, where he discusses the differences between Robert Muldoon from Jurassic Park and Owen Grady from Jurassic World. And he's discussing their differences and their ability to handle raptors. Now, if you go to his video and you look in the comment section, you'll most likely find my comment where I say that there's no way <laughs> that Robert Muldoon was a better raptor handler than Owen Grady. And I would make a video stating why, and here's the reasons why. Really, the major reason is, I think Clayton mentioned this in his video, is that Muldoon treats them like beasts, like monsters. Whereas Odin, uh, eh, not Odin, Owen, <laughs> Owen Grady treats them as actual animals. He treats them like animals with actual intelligence. Now, why do I think there's more than one reason? Well, there's another, is that if you see where they kept the raptors in Jurassic Park, they kept them in a small box, kind of box-like shape. Their entire enclosure was like a small, and was very small, kind of similar to how you would probably keep animals like a, a pig or a goat. You would keep them in this small kind of space as a kind of uh, shelter kind of structure. That's not what you're supposed to do with animals, especially with raptors. Because these animals need plenty of space to run around, to walk, to have their own secluded areas. And that's what I find interesting in Jurassic World is because even though the raptors don't have as big a space as I would put them in, they put them in a big enough space where Owen would... <laughs> I just got some... Okay. I just got some comment... I just got some little... Uh notifications from my phone from my YouTube app telling me that Clayton just loved my comment and another person liked it so <laughs> thank you for reading that Clayton but at any rate Lana, what was I saying that they weren't that the Raptors were kept in a big enough space for them to run around in to where they could walk around have enough space enough room to behave as animals should and a big enough space really because now that I think about it, actually, right now, that space is actually perfect for when you're training animals. That's a perfect amount of space for when you're training animals like raptors and such. Not necessarily a good place to keep them, but a good place to train them. And I love how in Jurassic World, where they have these little stations where you see the raptors, they get their heads, like, they hooked up into this little spot. And then there are handlers that come in, they pet them, they stroke them to check their vitals, give them basically a checkup like you would at the doctor. That just shows you how much different it was from Jurassic Park, is that uh, they're treated like animals. And if you know what raptors are, you'll know that raptors have a higher intelligence, a higher IQ than almost any other dinosaur in this franchise. Heck, I'd say they're almost as smart as us. Now, before anyone starts saying, Oh, Jacob, come on, don't say that stuff. People are going to think you like dinosaurs more than people and whatever. Bleh, be quiet. Look, what I'm saying is that there are animals, even today in the animal kingdom, that have not as high developed intelligence as humans do, but very close. Animals like elephants, gorillas, chimpanzees. Well, those two are apes, so obviously they would. Dolphins, bears. These animals have a higher IQ than most other animals typically would. And if you get a look at their brains, right? If you were to look up online pictures of dolphins, bears, elephants, whatever, you get a picture of their brains. You'll see that their brain is very similar to ours. The only difference I saw once was with an elephant's brain is that there's a big piece in the back right here, which I think is mostly because that's part of the brain associated with movement. And that big, that's in large because, well, an elephant is a much larger animal. But at any rate, you'll see that there is this, you'll always see on a brain this big wrinkly part right here in your head. That's the part of the brain associated with thinking, 
and I think it's associated with memory. I do think it is. I'm not quite sure. I don't look up things about people's brains and whatnot. I usually look up things about animals and such, not their brains. It has to do with intelligence, memory, and cognitive thinking. This is where you plan ahead, where you think about something and you plan ahead for it. Now, in raptors, I'm not sure I've... I've never seen anyone go delve into the study of how a raptor would think. But I've seen plenty of other theropods with other brain cases where the part with thinking isn't as developed as some of the other parts, like the part associated with movement or the parts associated with smell. Those parts are more highly developed than the other parts. It's only until we get into the Cretaceous period where we see more higher developed brains, especially in the Silurosaurian dinosaurs. And really, when it comes to these dinosaurs, you really need to be careful how you handle them. And this actually brings up a pretty interesting topic. Uh, where did I put that notebook? Is it over here? Not over. I could have sworn I had a notebook somewhere. Oh well. Uh, maybe I'll find it for an answering your questions video. But there was one of my subscribers who talked to me about what would I would I have a T-Rex and what would I name it? What would I do if I had a T-Rex and what would I name it? And really the best thing for you to do if you have a dinosaur like a T-Rex would be to have an imprint on you. Kind of like how raptors in the Jurassic Park franchise, as Clayton stated, imprinted on the first thing they've seen. Actually John Hammond said that too. John Hammond was there for the birth of every dinosaur that's ever hatched on the island, mostly. But he didn't teach his raptors social skills. He didn't interact with them as much as he had a park to build. But Owen Grady, he had his raptors in print on him. And he was with them every, not every hour of every day, but he was there as much as he could be. So really when it comes to animals with high intelligence, you really need to be careful about how you treat them because... I've seen it happen plenty of times where there are animals like elephants, they turn on their keepers because of how their keepers mistreat them. I've seen it happen with bears, it happens with a lot of animals, but especially with animals that have higher IQs. Now crocodiles, act, despite what people think, are pretty smart for reptiles, they're some of the smartest reptiles. Them and the varanids, the monitor lizards. And I'm getting off topic here, I was about to, I was trying to talk about the differences between Robert Muldoon and Owen Grady. But I'm getting off topic for a reason, and that is to tell you about animal intelligence. Is that animals with high intelligence are always going to, if they have the ability, to remember everything you've ever done to them. Which is why in Jurassic Park and in Jurassic World, raptors have their own personalities. Blue is able to recognize that Owen is the one who's cared for them, who's been there for them. Despite the fact that they turned on him, he still wants to take care of them. And when Blue realizes this, she turns on the Indominus Rex, and of course when the Indominus Rex swipes Blue, and it shows that the Indominus Rex doesn't really care about the raptors. That's when the other two raptors start to realize he doesn't care about us, Look what he just did to Blue. If he cared about us, he wouldn't do that. So really, the basis of imprinting raptors or T-Rexes... Who was it that sent me that? I think it was... I really should find that notebook because I need that notebook to do all my videos. Can I drop it on a bit? No. Ah, there it is. Let me see who asked me that. My notebook's right here. Let's see... It was Triop. Capital T, capital R, capital I, capital O, capital P. That's what her, his or her name is in the comments. And she, he or she left me, if you had a baby T-Rex, what would you do with it? And what would you name it? So I hope that, so I hope I answered your question okay. As to what I would name it, I don't have no idea. When we have pets around here, my mom usually names them. So I guess I would leave the naming to her. 
But if I were to name it, hmm. Roberta seems like a good name for a T-Rex. Matilda is a good name, but I think that's been used before. In a prehistoric park, that's where it was used. Hmm. What's a good name for T-Rex? I don't know, leave that in the comments section, guys. See what good names are good for a T-Rex. But if I had a baby T-Rex or any baby dinosaur or any baby animal, I would just basically take care of it. Because, like I've probably said before uh, plenty of times, and you're probably sick of the repetition, but how you take care of the animals reflects as to how they'll treat you in the future. Kind of like with your dog. When you have a puppy, you train it to use the restroom outside, you train it to eat food and water in certain areas, you train it to, you can train them to stay off your couch, off your bed. Me, I personally like my dogs with me on the couch or bed. You can train them to do plenty of things, and when they're young, it's easier for them for to learn then. When they're older, it's a little harder to learn for them, but they'll get the general idea when you give them the command. That old myth where you can't teach an old dog new tricks, that's a myth. That is completely wrong. You can teach even an older dog new tricks. But what was I... I get, I get off topic so bad, I swear. But uh, to wrap this up, I don't think that Owen Grady... I don't think that Robin Muldoon is a better caretaker for raptors or dinosaurs in general. As stated by Clayton Faridi, he is a he's worked on a Kenya petting zoo basically. He's worked in Kenya as a what was it? What are they what do they call them? A park warden, that's it. He's worked in Kenya as a park warden. Which is an interesting job which I might take in the future. Whereas Owen, I believe he was in the Navy, and I know that in the military there are certain branches where you're able to train animals, such as dogs and such. So really, I think Owen really just knows what he's doing when it comes to training animals. He's not treating them like monsters, he's treating them like animals, which is the whole point of the Jurassic Park franchise, to see dinosaurs not as movie monsters, but to see them as animals. Oh, you know what? I can't. If I keep putting this off, I am going to be miserable. What was I saying? Basically, I went off on tangents. I've gone off topic too many times in one video. But I'll still upload this so you guys can hear my thoughts. Robert Muldoon is not the best take care caretaker for raptors. I'm just throwing it out there. Whereas Owen Grady is. That's as plain as I could put it. And if you made it this long through the video, congratulations. Because I know I'm pretty annoying when I'm on camera. And on that note, I think I should just wrap this up. Thank you guys for enjoying this video. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Leave comments in the comment section down below to, for more answering your questions videos, more discussion topics, more videos to think about in the future. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell down by the subscribe button so that you are up to date with every video I've uploaded so far. What was I saying? Oh yes, I was wrapping this up. I get, I blank out so much. Take care, guys, and aloha.